In college football, there are a lot of what-if scenarios, like what if a player chooses a different school? What if a player never decommits from a certain school? What if a certain player never gets injured? And what if this team just won a certain game? With this sport, there are a lot of what-if scenarios, and in today's video, I'll be looking at five crazy college football what-if scenarios and just going in depth about them. As usual, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get into the video. The first what-if scenario that I am going to be talking about in today's video is what if Colt McCoy never went down with injury in the 2010 BCS National Championship title game versus Alabama. Colt McCoy, he is a Texas Longhorn legend. In his career, he completed 70% of his passes, threw for over 13,000 yards, threw for 112 total touchdown passes through the air, and only 45 interceptions in four seasons played. In the 2009 college football season, he was one of the best players in college football, as he completed 70% of his passes, threw for over 3,500 yards, had 27 touchdown passes, and only 12 interceptions, and was a Heisman finalist. More importantly about Colt McCoy in the 2009 college football season is that he led Texas to an undefeated record which got them a spot in the BCS national title game versus Alabama. This was going to be Colt McCoy's biggest game of his career, the national title game, the game that everyone watches and the game that everyone looks forward to. Unfortunately for Colt McCoy, his day ended early as he got injured the very first drive the Longhorns had the ball. In the first drive that Texas had in the game, McCoy got them all the way to Alabama's 11-yard line before he went down with injury. The drive would end up in a field goal, and the quarterback that came in for Colt McCoy was true freshman quarterback Garrett Gilbert. Although Gilbert did get his fair share of some playing time during the season as the quarterback, this was not an environment you want a true freshman backup quarterback to be in, the national title game versus a very good Alabama defense. Garrett Gilbert would end up completing 15 of 40 passes, throwing for 186 yards, two touchdowns, and four interceptions, and Alabama would end up winning the game 37 to 21. The big thing with this game is what if Colt McCoy never got injured? Does Texas win the national title with him? And what happens to Texas football if they do actually win the 2009 college football season title? On to the next one that I have. It's one that I feel like people don't really talk about. When you hear Justin Fields, you think about what if he didn't decommit from Penn State? But this one is what if he never transferred from Georgia? A lot of people know how Justin Fields broke out on the scene at Ohio State and in his two seasons he made it to a national title, two playoff appearances, two Big Ten championship titles, and a Heisman finalist season in 2019. In the two seasons he was an Ohio State starting quarterback, he had a really good campaign as he completed 68% of his passes, threw for over 5,000 yards, 63 touchdown passes, 9 interceptions, and a total of 15 touchdowns on the ground. However, before he became the star Ohio State quarterback, Justin Fields was supposed to be the future star quarterback of another team, the Georgia Bulldogs. He was a 5-star recruit in the 2018 recruiting class, one of the top players in the nation, and he was expected to be the next Bulldog great. As a backup quarterback with Georgia in the 2018 college football season, he played very well, and in his limited showing, he did show how good he could be, or at least the potential that he had in his game. But it was kind of clear that Jake Fromm was the guy, and that he was going to have to wait maybe a couple of years to be the guy at Georgia and have to wait his turn. And Justin Fields, he didn't want to do that, and he eventually transferred to Ohio State. You can come up with a lot of what-if scenarios for Justin Fields at Georgia, like what if he stayed, what happens to Georgia football, and what happens when Justin Fields finally gets his time to shine, or what if he ended up transferring to another school besides Ohio State. And that one, it's kind of interesting, as a player whose career seemed to just go downhill after he transferred to Ohio State was Tate Martell. If Fields never transferred to Ohio State, we would have seen Tate Martell as the starting quarterback in 2019 for the Buckeyes, and maybe for the rest of his career if he really panned out. Which is kind of insane to think about that this one move really did affect Tate Martell's entire career. With this next one, it's one that not many people really talk about. 
but once you really take a big look into it, you can really see how much of an effect it had on the 2021 college football season, and that is what if Brock Vandegrift never decommitted from Oklahoma? Before Caleb Williams was the quarterback in the 21 class for the Oklahoma Sooners, there was another quarterback by the name of Brock Vandegrift who was also a five-star. He was originally an Oklahoma commit, but shortly after the Sooners season ended in 2020, he would decommit and end up flipping to Georgia. And this opened the door for Caleb Williams to start getting recruited by Lincoln Riley, which ultimately led to Caleb Williams ending up at Oklahoma. Now, when you take a really deep look at this, if Vandergriff never decommitted from Oklahoma, Caleb Williams would never be an Oklahoma quarterback and would potentially not be a USC quarterback today. As Lincoln Riley, he was not going to offer another quarterback, and it didn't matter if he was the number one quarterback in the class, he was going to keep his pledge to the other five-star quarterback in Brock Vandergriff. But since Vandergriff decommitted, it opened the door wide open for Caleb Williams to go to OU and finally get the offer that he really wanted. And Caleb Williams, as a true freshman, he was originally supposed to redshirt and be a backup quarterback to Spencer Rattler, but... As you may know it, that did not happen as he would end up taking over Spencer Rattler's job during the Texas game and he never lost it. A big thing in this scenario when looking at it, if Vandergriff stays committed to OU, where would Caleb Williams have gone? And would Vandergriff have been able to lead a comeback versus Texas like Caleb Williams did? And would he actually have been able to take the job from Spencer Rattler? And that's something that we'll never know. And another big thing when looking at this is, who would be the quarterback at USC right now if Lincoln would still have left? As he wouldn't have Caleb Williams in his back pocket, who would pretty much for sure end up following him to that school. Who would be the quarterback at USC? On to this next what if scenario. It is what if Jamar Chase chose TCU over LSU? Jamar Chase at LSU had an amazing career for the two seasons he really played in, since in his last year, he would actually opt out of the 2020 season. In his career at LSU, he had 107 receptions for 2,093 yards, averaging almost 20 yards per reception and 23 total touchdowns through the air. But his biggest season was the year that LSU won the Natty, and he won the Belitnikoff Award in that one season. As a sophomore in 2019, he had 1,780 receiving yards, averaging 21 yards of reception and 20 total touchdowns through the air. But what if I told you Jamar Chase was never supposed to play at LSU? He was originally supposed to be a TCU Horn Frog, and that was going to be his plan. Back in high school, Jamar Chase was at the 2017 opening finals at the Nike World headquarters, and he was supposed to announce his commitment live on the NFL Network. He was going to be announcing it after four-star recruit Greg Emerson, who would eventually commit to the Tennessee Vols on that same day. Jamar Chase was prepared to be committed to TCU. He had a box with a TCU hat and TCU gloves, and he was ready to announce his commitment. However, Emerson got injured earlier that week, and you know how I said he would end up committing still on that day? Yeah, he did, live on the NFL Network, but the NFL Network loved his story so much they held Emerson around for much longer than they were supposed to, which cut into Chase's time, so Chase never actually got his time to commit on live television on the NFL Network, and he was destroyed by it. But his family took it as a sign for him to keep his recruitment open, so he did. And since that happened, he eventually found his way as an LSU Tiger instead of a TCU Horned Frog. When looking at this, it really does make you think. What if Jamar Chase did end up committing to TCU on that day? How would his career pan out? And what would happen to LSU in that 2020 season? On to the final what if scenario that I have in today's video. It does involve another LSU player, this time being Joe Burrow. This what if scenario is, what if Nebraska offered Joe Burrow? Everyone knows about the Joe Burrow 2019 campaign as an LSU Tiger. It was the perfect season and probably the best season we've ever seen from a single player in a single season. As Joe Burrow led LSU to an undefeated season in which they won the national title and he, well, went completely off. He won the Heisman, rightfully so. He completed 76% of his passes, threw for 5,671 yards, 60 touchdowns, and only 6 interceptions. 
let's take a little bit of a flashback to high school. Joe Burrow playing in the state of Ohio in high school was a dominant quarterback. He was a four-star recruit, and although he was a four-star, he really didn't have the biggest offers or really the biggest interest, even though he was a dominant high school quarterback and a four-star recruit. You may even call him very underrated, but he had a dream since he was a little kid, and that was to be a Nebraska Cornhusker. He wanted to play for Nebraska, and he wanted to be their future quarterback. However, Nebraska had different views as Nebraska told him he wasn't good enough to play for them. So he would eventually end up at Ohio State. At Ohio State, Joe Burrow was nothing more than just a backup quarterback. And he was a backup quarterback for a few seasons before finding his way at LSU as a transfer quarterback, starting his first season on the collegiate level in 2018. He would eventually have that big 2019 season and was the best player in college football. This scenario really does make you think, what if Joe Burrow did get offered by Nebraska? Because if he got offered by them, he more than likely would have ended up a Cornhusker and their future quarterback one at some point in his career. And it's really interesting to think about how would he have turned out at Nebraska and how would Nebraska have turned out with Joe Burrow as their QB one. It's also interesting to think about what would have happened to LSU without Joe Burrow? Who would have been the quarterback in 2018? And would they have had the 2019 season they had without Joe Burrow? More than likely not. Well guys, if you made it this far in the video, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Be Kelly out. <laughs>